a program. You organize it like a program that you are going to. You can say it's a program, but it's very flexible according to the needs of the people. Now, if the people are not ready yet, then I do more to revive the spiritual life. Okay. And when people are ready, then I will train them how they can, their life can be changed, they have a close relationship with God, take care of problems, and then they can be trained to pray for people, or trained to share the gospel, share the word of God, even to preach. I have training of every area, how to lead people to worship and enter the strong presence of God. So, so it's up to what you need. Whatever you need, I will do. You see, in our community, um, I don't know if you've been among uh, the African communities. Oh yeah, I've been to Africa, many oh, countries. This is South Africa, I believe. Yeah, I've, I've been to <laughs> yeah. African. You uh, see, sometimes in our community, we have people with not only spiritual problems, but physical problems. Physical problems. Like, physical problems. Uh, yes. Like, uh, you, you, you go to a place where you meet people that have a, there's a niece that, that's, that you just can't pray for the person and you, know, you tell him or her, God bless you. Um, maybe you walk to the place and then you see people have a financial problem. And you know, for one to open up with you, sometimes he's expecting more. You understand? He's expecting more. So when you you touch the physical side, then the spiritual side is also open to you. So when we meet such a situation, how how do you go about it? You mean people just concerned about the physical needs? They have problems and they maybe one don't see the spiritual side as a problem, but maybe a, let's say financial needs. And so maybe that to the person that out, uh, uh, out, outweighed the spiritual side. But maybe you are looking at the spiritual side. You understand me? So it is like even though you're doing your best to help the person, the spiritual side, the person is also looking at the other side, the uh, physical side. So how does it go together for the person to open up unto you so that I pray the true you will bless him? Yeah. I have a teaching, it's like a house. In this house, on top it says, everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from Him. Yeah. When we're a Christian, do you believe that God has everything in His hand, including finance, our future, our marriage, our life, everything in, in His hand and no one can run away from Him. Do we believe that there is an almighty and loving God? And then, and on the right hand side of this house, if we have a good relationship with Him and obey Him, the Bible has promised us that seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Now, many people, many Christians know this Bible verse very well, but they just don't believe that. Mm -hmm. But for Christians who are sincere in their faith, they would have experienced the help of God in times of difficulty. So I've, I've experienced that a lot. I've noticed that. When I love God and follow God, God really worked in my life to open ways to train me, to build me up, and then to bless me. I received so many blessings I cannot count. I really, so if we all can share that. Now some people think, I just want to work every day, every day, work every day, and then I'll have a lot of money. But if God is not blessing them, they will be working so hard, so hard, and they're always in lack of money. But if they trust in God and seek first the kingdom of God, that God will open the way, the wisdom that, that they can do better works, then have more money so that they can dedicate their life to God more. Now, some people don't believe that. But if we have more examples of that, if we ourselves, I have many stories of this for myself and the people around me. So, and then and when we serve God, for sure we'll receive a hundredfold this life and forever, you know, eternal life. And then on the other side of the house, if we disobey Him, that will reap destruction. And when, when we don't serve Him, the result is that people who don't serve God, like in Matthew 25, the one with the one talent bury it, and then he's cast out into the darkness, gnashing his teeth, 
is that heaven? That is not heaven. So many Christians think I just come to receive blessing, but if we have these blessings, we want to give to other people. So uh, with this constant teaching, if we can bless other people, God will bless us more. So when we have more and more stories like that, people will be motivated. But I know many people, you know, the church is like the pyramid. And the bottom are the people who are needy, who are weak, who have problem overcoming the sins, and those are the most numerous. And then up a little bit more are the ones who are more steady in the faith. And then up more are people who are willing to serve. And then up more are people who are devoted to serve. And then up on top are the ones who have the strategy from God how to serve God. But not many people are dedicated like that. But do you want to go up high and high and have a pure heart and will see blessings? For instance, for myself, I came from a very poor family. When I was young, I ate rice with mold on it. We wash away the mold and cook it. And a lot of times I ate rice and soya sauce. And, you know, not much, you know, uh, vitamin. It's just keeping alive, staying alive. But God opened a way for me to be able to study overseas and have a lot of education. It's all provided by God. That when we follow God, God will provide for us. If we have more and more examples of, of that, then people would be motivated. So, and this need, you know, teaching and guiding, and also when they experience the help of God. So when they have the peace of God, they feel they enjoy God more, they, they enjoy life, they sleep better, they work better, they have better job and more in, better income. So it, it takes time. So now for people who are not motivated to change, I can do revival, training. The revival is not just experiencing the Holy Spirit. They need to understand what God can do for us, how God can bless us. Okay, any other question or what you'd like me to talk about? You know, I can. Basically, uh, I, yes. what is uh, evangelical, to have evangelic stomach? To evangelical stomach. To have evangelic stomach. I, the other time you were teaching, and you said that uh, to, in order for, for you to enable to spread the word, you need to get some attitude. And one of the attitudes is to have evangelic stomach. Yeah. Um, so what is the? What do you mean I, by that? I think I never used that term before. Maybe you thought thought about okay. remember someone else. But I do have a heart to bless people, bring people to Jesus. Now, how do I motivate people to have this eagerness to spread the gospel and to raise up people's spiritual life? I would say this. From the Bible, we can see people who really love God and serve God. God really likes these people, and God has a special plan. Actually, God has a special plan on each person. And each person, if they're devoted, can go to a very high level. Every single person can go to a very high level uh, because God sees the heart, God likes them. If God likes them, everything is possible for them. You know, I have experienced miracles like, let me share a few to see how God bless those who love God. I'm saying this not just for me, it's for everyone. One time I, I was traveling to Africa and I missed the plane because I miscalculated the time. <laughs> it was my mistake. And I went to the counter and asked the person, uh, uh, you know, I was supposed to go on the plane, and it's already, already past the time. She said, well, nothing I can do. You have to go and rebook the ticket. And so I went to the rebooking counter, and then they said, well, it's very complicated because you bought the ticket in Hong Kong. It's very, very complicated. And then I prayed to God, Lord, with you, everything is possible because I've experienced so many miracles. I said, with you, is, everything is possible. Please perform a miracle. Mm -hmm. And I asked the woman, please make a phone call and find out about what I can do. I, I didn't think of the plane returning. I never had the thought. I was just saying, can something be done? And then she made a phone call, and then her eyes and mouth were open. <laughs> the plane came back. <laughs> so I can get on the plane again. Oh, yes. so. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. 
God. So, because if God likes somebody, and I have people told me they went to heaven, I, you know, I know, you know, I, I pray for someone who experienced the Holy Spirit, and her life is totally changed, and she prayed and went to heaven many times. And she went to heaven, and Jesus showed her the book of record of her reward. Because I was the person who revived her spiritual life, and she said to Jesus, can I see Pastor Yip's book of re record of reward? And, and Jesus asked an angel to bring it to her. And she described it. First is thick. Second is covered with gold. Mm. Third, it says, my beloved son, and then my name. Mm. And when I heard that, I said, mm. Jesus, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve that because I've sinned much in the past. After I was revived by the Holy Spirit, I really gave up all these sins. I really took care of my sinful ways. And God raised me up to such a high level, to, you know, willingness to serve God. It's God's blessing. It's not me. And I said, Lord, I'm not deserved to be called your beloved son. But I'm, I'm very happy to be mm. called your beloved son. Because this is one person who saw that in heaven. Another person, while I was preaching, she received that word, and, and then when I talk about this testimony, she said, I received that word a while ago that you are the beloved, beloved son of God. So I, I'm just saying, when we really love God, then God really likes us and bless us. And what God likes most are the people who have compassion to save people and raise up people's spiritual life. You know, the person who prayed for me, is called Carlos Anacondia from Argentina. Now something about him is very special. He's an evangelist, very special. Whenever he leaves any meeting, he will pray for every single person. You know, many evangelists after pray for a while, they get tired and they leave. But he, he will pray for every single person. And one time we were eating with him. And I asked him many questions. I said, how can you have that anointing? And then he said, because of, we need to have compassion. And then I want to ask, how do you pray then? And the answer is also to have compassion on people, always compassion. And then one of the men there asked him to pray for his wife who has some problem with the eye. And the moment Carlos and Antonio touched her, I can see if she was crying so you know, uh, so freely that her mouth was twisted. <laughs> it's all twisted. And at the same moment, I felt the strong anointing of love upon me. So strong. I cried for the whole time while he was praying for everyone. So what I'm saying is, if someone has compassion for loss, God really likes the person and God really wants to bless this person and God will open the way for this person and God will do everything He can to make this person go higher and higher. So I say, if you have this motivation, now people can work very hard, very hard, but whole lifetime is struggling to stay alive. Do you want to live like that? Or do you want, you know, I came from a very poor family. When my first wife passed away in 2008, I, I just thought I, I would stay single, I will uh, just be a missionary, go to, you know, at first I go, I think of go to a, a certain country and stay there, go to one place or another. But God has a different plan for me. And God provided for me this wife. I did not chase after her, God just provided for me. And God provided for me now that I can go to many, thank God, and then I can go to many different countries. In the past, when my first wife passed away, all my money was used up. I had no money. But God immediately gave it back to me. And God gave me more and more. So I'm saying, when God knows someone's heart, now I'm not saying everyone will have the same way. God is responsible. And He knows who loves Him. And He will provide the anointing, the wisdom, and the open door, and everything for him. So I will encourage people, do you want to be like that? And when people hear 
words of God like this, you know, that I, when I preach the word of God, they feel excited, and maybe you feel some excitement too. And then they, and then I ask them, who, which one of you want to serve God more? And then can you come earlier, and then practice, learn, and then pray for people, and then learn, you know, see how I do it, and then gradually you learn it. So I raise up people to, to have this heart of compassion on anyone. Now for me, I put many videos online, and uh, you just search for Pastor Yip Y-I-P, and then you put English there, then you'll see the English videos, because if not, you'll see many Chinese videos. And then, you see many people experience God and many, and many good teachings. So many people came to me for help, and I helped all these people for free, and without condition. I never dragged people from the church to me, I just blessed them. Now, if people want to learn from me, they're welcome to learn from me. Want to attend my meeting, they're welcome. But I won't ever say to them, leave your church. I never pull people away from the church. I just say, you're welcome here. I can bless you so you can bless your church. Mm -hmm. So my motivation is just to bless people. And some people are just blessed, and then they, they go and back bless the church. I'm very happy for them. Mm -hmm. So I, I just have a pure heart not to bless myself, but to bless people. And God opened a way for me that I can go to one country to another. Okay. Anything? Hallelujah. Anything you want to ask or want me to talk about? The, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with what you said. I'm very impressed with what you just said. And then suppose that um, any of us wants to learn from you as you put it. Apart from sitting um, face to face like this, do you also have other programs that probably we can do like online online or you have it in books that we can follow? I have some documents I've written. Okay. I wrote more in Chinese <laughs> but I wrote a number in English. And if you arrange it I'm happy to do it online. But usually Online is more difficult than a real person. And also, in my training, it's not just teaching. We'll practice it. So everyone practice it. And also, in some places, I give them exams. So after they learn it, can they say it themselves? Can they present it? And then I give them certificates to motivate people to go through the whole program and to learn to apply in the, spirit, uh, in the ministry. OK, so I believe in the authenticity of the Holy Spirit. Like God Himself is impacting His grace because you're teaching the person. So if 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 you meet somebody who does not have the calling of God on his life, and you teach them, would you please give us an example of somebody you met like that that you didn't have the calling of God on their on their lives, but because you taught them, they learned and then they practice it and then now they have it. Okay. Now because I. I don't want people to fake it. Right. You, you get what I mean. You, I don't want people to fake it because you can, you can, you can give me your knowledge by teaching me, and I can copy what you are saying. And then I also begin to tell people, this is what you, what is what you should do, and this is what will happen. Meanwhile, I do not have the original calling of God that is upon your life, and I'm only copying you. So how would I make sure that? Somebody is not only copying or just copying, but is administering with the real and the authentic power and the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Now, I believe that God has a calling on everyone, not some to be pastors, some to be, you know, workers of different kinds, but at the same time, they can be good witnesses of God. Not everyone is a minister, but everyone is called to serve God. And I believe that when people are changed, then, for instance, you know, someone goes to work, and, and he's so excited about Jesus. He would talk about Jesus, from, you know, in a very natural way. Now, he might not talk about Jesus all the time because he would turn people off. But he would, very important too, the counseling skill, which one part I learned is listening to people and responding to the needs. For instance, a coworker says, Oh, I'm very tired. Oh, 
I know it's, and then we'll respond, I know it's very difficult for you. You have so much work to do, and you're still so hardworking, and you're wonderful. You're a wonderful father or mother, and you're a wonderful worker. But we can respond to their feelings, and respond to their needs, that we can guide people to be open to the blessings of God. And then, when people experience this from us, then we appreciate this. For instance, I appreciate how you ask questions and how you uh, ask questions. I see that in your heart you have a hunger. So when I hear that, I would listen and I would notice that. And, I, and then I would say, I would respond to you so, you so you get encouraged. And then I would tell them how they can be used by God. Now, I have raised some people who serve God in a number of situations. I, I give you some examples. One time, I met a minister in a meeting, open meeting. I didn't know him before, but I know someone else. And this person knows him. And then we, we talk, you know, together. And then he said, I have one church member who got evil spirit. And I'm trying to guess, get a powerful person, pastor, to go to drive out demons. I said, well, if you wait for this famous pastor, you might have to wait for a long time, but I can do it today with you. And this is quite well with him. And this person was totally out of control with evil spirit. But after the prayer, she was all calm. The, you know, the same day the doctor said she has to go to a mental hospital. But after the prayer, the doctor said she can now go back home. And there was one, there were different friends present. And I said, I can pray for all of you to protect you from the evil spirit. But there was one girl who stayed longer. And I noticed the Holy Spirit's power is upon her. I told her, open your heart. God is upon you. And the moment she opened her heart, she was filled with joy. She laughed loudly in the lobby of a hospital. <laughs> she was laughing, ah, <laughs> filled with joy. And then after five minutes of laughing, she started to cry. And she cried very loudly for a longer time. And then she started to laugh again. And I asked her what happened. She said, I have a lot of hurt feelings from the past. And I experienced Jesus healing, setting me free. And then she started to come to my church. And then later she studied to be a minister. And now she is a missionary. Just one contact with a stranger. I have many examples of this, you know, that because they, they saw this compassion I have and my care for them. And also the Word of God, which is powerful. I preach, you know, I have ways to preach the Word of God to let people know how wonderful God is. That's another of my teaching. Very important is, it's called God's Nature Preaching Method that I always let people know about how wonderful God is. And then when people hear that, they like God more. So, so all these are part of the training so that when people hear us, they feel the presence of God and the love of God inside us. And then they will be changed much easier. Another person who, you know, a couple, both of them, the wife and the husband, saw me in a dream before they came to my church. It's a miracle, you know. I have this experience about eight times. People never knew me never saw me, and then saw me in a dream before I went to a place. And these two persons, they wanted to go to my church. They planned to go to my church. And that night, they both dreamed of me. And then after they came, they were set free from the burdens and worries. And, and then the, the wife said, can you go to my home country, my home, country, my home village, and help my family members? And I went there and prayed for them. And they, many of them got healed and life changed, full of joy. And, and then I asked her, do you want to serve God? And she said, yes. And then, so that's how, now she's a minister of God. So that, I mean, it happened many times that I did it. Like in Kenya, there's a, uh, a minister that heard my teaching. And now he's very, he's very excited to go to different places. And he tried to use my teaching. And, uh, I, and I help him, help him uh, to a certain degree. I don't want him to, to depend on me, but I help him that he would uh, be able to bless more people. And then he said, now, 
I pray for people. He said, one time I had a meeting, and I prayed for the one in the front, and the two persons behind them all fell down together. Now, I'm not saying, actually, I pray for people. Who, who should I pull them so that they won't fall apart? But the main thing is, I pray that they will experience the peace and the love and the burdenless, the burdens go away of God and changed by the love of God. Uh, that's most, more important than falling down. Um, talking about uh, uh, deliverance, I, uh, I have heard people say it's like there is a level by which your anointing can take you. Um, like we have a kind of a level that goes like deep, deeper, deepest. Like you use this pyramid thing to narrate your story. Now, do we have such a thing or a, a child of God can cast demons no matter how powerful, how, how, no matter how strong we are. No matter how. No matter how possessed the person is. It doesn't matter how the demon has taken over the place over there, you can just command. Because I've heard. Uh, people talk about this, you know, uh, level of anointing. Yeah, for me, for deliverance, my concept with this is this. Jesus said that, you know, there's one person who is clean of evil spirit, and the evil spirit brought seven more worse spirits. So when a person is driven out of, you know, the demons are driven out, but then they don't take care of problems in their life, and they don't have a good relationship with God, it's, in, it's all in vain. The spirits will come back. So for me, in the deliverance, it's very important that the person take responsibility. So now, if who the person... Who take responsibility? The person who needs deliverance. Okay. Because if it... Just think, okay, now, there are many people like this. They go to this meeting and that meeting and mm -hmm. any, any evangelist come by, they go yeah. there for deliverance yeah. and then they go home and get angry and yeah. frustrated and have lust and, and, and probably come back and then they look for the next evangelist. Yeah. Now, that way they never get deliverance. They have to realize that to have total deliverance first is to have, so I always have counseling. Unless the person is totally out of con our control, then I would first do some deliverance and then teaching and then counseling help them. So first, a close relationship with God. And a close relationship with God, many people have this concept, okay? Repent, pray, obey, read the Bible, do all these things. Then it's always doing. And people say, wow, so much doing, so much work. I cannot do it. I cannot be good enough. Mm -hmm. But I always tell them, from the Bible, God first gave us love to motivate us. That when we're not good, when we repent, God is very happy. The whole heaven is happy. Whenever we pray, God is so happy. He dwells in our praise. And then when we come close to Him, He'll come close to us. And if someone loves Him, He will raise Him up to a high level, you know, set Him on high place. So God is very happy and responsive to us. So. When I tell people to have a good relationship with God, I would say, God loves you so much. He wants to bless you. He wants to, He wants you to have an abundant life. At any moment you say, God, I'm not good enough. I need you to help me. I really want you in my life. God is so happy. He will smile. <laughs> you know, in Chinese we have this saying that you see the teeth and don't see the eyes. You know, mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and. God is so happy when they realize, the Bible does teach them, that, you know, like for instance, giving a cup of cold water, you by no means lose your reward. That is saying, whatever you do with a pure heart, even a small thing, God is very happy. So when people understand that, this, so that's my first teaching. It's not, oh, so much work to do, but it's say, my Father God, He loves me so much. He wants me all the time, and anytime I pray, He's very happy. So I have this interactive prayer. I have these three kinds of prayer that help us, our relationship with God. First is prayer of grace. Every, one, every day I would declare, God is loving me, God is blessing me, God has a wonderful plan in my life. It's always God to me, God blessing me. That's true. 
And the second is worship. I love you, Lord. I need you. I hold on to you. I like you. Now, I use terms like this because God likes us. He wants us to like Him also. And the third is that interactive prayer. Anytime I pray, I know that God is very happy to respond to us. God is excited. So every time I pray, I would say, God is now very happy. So He hears my prayer. He will respond to my prayer. And so my prayer is not in vain. I always encourage myself like that. And I encourage my people. Many people say, oh, my prayer is... Doesn't, you know, doesn't reach to God. I cannot do anything good. I cannot do anything great. God doesn't listen to my prayer. That's a wrong concept. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He loves us all the time. Anytime God's children come to you and say, Lord, I need you. I want you. I sincerely love you and like you. God is so excited. He would, you know, see this person is very important. So to me, with the grace motivating people, People really love to have this relationship with God. It's, it's like, you don't tell a son, you have to love me. You have to give me birthday gifts. You have to honor me. And then I'll, I'll give you good gifts. But you will say to your son, I like you, son. You are so good. I like you. I want to be with you. And then when you like me, I'm so happy. I mean, that way, it will motivate the relationship. But many people motivate Christian. You have to read the Bible. Did you read the Bible? Did you repent? Are you still in sin? Uh, how many sins have you committed? You know, have you, how, how much time you have spent in reading the Bible? It's all the law. Now, I have the law, but I motivate them with the grace of God. God mm. loves you so much. So when you read the Bible, God is very happy. Mm. When you pray, God is very happy. Now, when people understand that, relationship with God is not a pressure. Relationship with God is a pleasure, not a pressure. It's a pleasure. It's enjoyable. And then, they have garbage. We all have garbage. Negative thinking, negative emotions, sins, lust, all this need to be taken care of. And after experience the Holy Spirit, the Lord really guide me to repent of all sins. The moment I have any kind of bad thoughts, in me I say this is very destructive. It will destroy my life. I want to turn away from this sin because any time I sin, I give the devil a foothold. And also I let Satan take away the blessings of God and destroy the plan of God in my life. Now, if I put it in a very real example, if I committed a serious sin, I could lose all the opportunities I have to serve God. So I don't want to commit any small sin. Even if I go to a place I get angry, people might say, well, Pastor Yim, he teaches not to be angry and he gets angry. I don't want to invite him anymore. I will close doors. Mm. So I say, I don't want to do anything to destroy God's plan. So I will tell people, yes, God loves you and you love him and you don't want to destroy anything from God, all the blessing, and then you love him and take care of his needs and you follow God and have long time praying to God and the demons will go away. Like, you can spend time driving out demons, but don't spend all the time driving out demons. Some people, they think driving out demons like this. Oh, Jesus' name, all the devils go out. Jesus' name, all the devils go out. And they keep yelling for one hour, two hours, and still, they don't go. And now for me, it's very important this person live in love. And one time I was praying for someone. I was just saying, oh, Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you're wonderful. And then she started to have demons coming up. And there was a person, a Christian sitting there. She, she said, are you driving out demons? I said, I guess I am. You know, the demons are coming up. How come you didn't say, in Jesus' name, demons come out? I said, God's presence will drive out demons. But I do, I did drive out the demons sometimes. But I don't spend all the time doing it. I enjoy God. God's presence will drive the demons to me. And also for Him to take care of problems. So for a complete deliverance. This love for God and believe in God's love and take care of different problems and, problems and have a close relationship with God will for sure drive off any demon in yeah. them. So it doesn't all depend on the pastor. But the pastor, of course, anointing and uh, peace, I think is very important. You know, there are so many ministers serve with pressure. You know, the, when some ministers preach, now I'm not saying to anyone, I'm just saying a general fact, that they will say, you don't repent, 
and you don't have revival, you don't, don't deserve the revival, you have to repent and you have to do this, you have to do that, and you're too lazy. It's, it's all telling the people you're not doing good enough. It's, it discourages people more than encourage people. But if the pastor is relaxed and, and everything, anything negative, he takes it very, in a very easy way. When people hear that, they see that the pastor really trusts in God's provision and God's way. And when people hear this, they will want to change. People want to change. So. Okay. Um, what uh, motivates you? Uh, is it, and how do you get this uh, motivation? Because you visit some countries, and whatever takes place motivates you, or it's the, the love of God that move, is moving you? Well, first, uh, before I experienced the Holy Spirit, already something happened to me that brought me to appreciate God's love. What happened was, in my ministry, I found that there was always criticism. I know that you experienced that too, you know. When I first became a pastor, the criticism came from a co-worker because she expected much of me. She thought that I graduated from the seminary, I should be a great, great pastor. And then I couldn't reach to her expectation, and she, and then she started to talk to my wife, telling, me, telling her how she was disappointed. And what happened was, my wife would get very frustrated and keep yelling at me, and, and you know, give me pressure. And I felt so painful. And I started to cry to God, Oh Lord Jesus, deliver me, set me free, Lord Jesus, I need you. Just give me peace, take away these burdens. And I keep crying to God. And then I, I start to, sometimes I start to sing Bible verses like, like this. Um, now I, I sing this in Chinese generally, but I'll, 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 I'll put it in, in English. But usually, at that time, I sing Bible verses like, Oh, hallelujah, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah, the Lord is my shepherd. When I just sing, I become more and more peaceful. And when I read Bible passages, like the Jesus healed a woman with a 12 year uh, bleeding. You know, the woman wanted to be healed secretly because she, she could touch people because she wasn't clean. But she, she wanted to go secretly behind Jesus and touch his clothing. And she got healed. And then she wanted to go away. But Jesus said, who touched me? And then she dare not say it. And then Jesus said, someone must have touched me because power came from me. And then she prostrated before Jesus and said, it's me. And then said, what happened to her when she touched Jesus? And she expected Jesus to say, why did you touch me? And you touch everyone else, you're unclean. You, you'll make a mess of this whole thing. I mean, he might expect Jesus to say something like this. But Jesus said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Mm -hmm. First I see Jesus cares about his, her feelings. Her needs. Not about what she has done wrong. And for a lot of people, they would say, You have done this wrong, this, done this wrong. Mm -hmm. But Jesus respond to her feeling, her needs. Take heart, don't worry, relax, it's okay. My daughter, now that's very comforting to her. She can never imagine Jesus would call her daughter because she would imagine Jesus call her, you're a sinner, you deserve that. But Jesus called her daughter. Jesus calls daughter and, and sons also. And and then take, you know, your faith has healed you. It's not by a lot of hard work, you just believe and you're healed. So when I read the Bible passages, I start to appreciate the love of God before I experience the Holy Spirit. I start to preach about the love of God. And I put, as I talk, now I talk about the nature of God. In the nature of God, you see His compassion, His desire to have this father, son, and father, daughter relationship. He cares about our feelings. It's all in his nature. That his nature, he cannot stop loving and caring. So 
But the more I understand, so one of my teaching very important is God's nature preaching method. To let people see the wonderful nature of God. And so I have all this background. And then I experienced the Holy Spirit. And the love was so strong and overwhelming. I said, I never knew that for this all these years, I had been a Christian for 28, no, let's see, uh, 98, 28 years before I experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I said, I never knew I can experience the Holy Spirit like that, experience His love like that. And I said, this is so wonderful. And I said, I want to live in your love. So all day long, I would think about Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I like you, I love you. And now, any moment I think of Jesus, His joy will flow through me. His love will flow through me. His power will flow through me. Anytime I think of Jesus, I can feel, feel Him all over me. So when I experience Him, I say, God, you're wonderful in every single way. Your nature, your love, your plan for us, your reward for us, how you remember everything we do for you. And I say, Lord, I don't want to miss any, any small blessing from you. I want, to, I want to receive more from me so I can bless more people. And actually, my motivation now is when I see people, I just want to bless, you know. At the age of 66, I can retire anytime. Actually, I've retired formally. But I keep working, I keep doing, you know, going to different places because I want to make the best of my life. And actually, my motivation is when I see people suffering, even pastors under pressure and accusing themselves and being accused by people and, you know, find it hard. And, and I want to tell people it's not so hard when we have the joy and the love of Jesus and know that God is happy. Anytime we help a little one, God is very happy. If we serve like that, God is very happy with me when I talk to this person. God is laughing loudly and the angels are very happy. We will be very motivated and we know that God is responsible for our ministry. That way people will have more motivation. So my motivation came from first, God's love. Second, from how He blessed me. Third, I don't want to waste my life. But now it's more... I think I have received this heart of God, from God, that I have this heart when I see people, I just want to bless people. I don't want to take anything from people, I just want to bless. When I go to places, I, uh, most of the time I take up all the financial responsibilities. I would come and provide for the meetings, but I also encourage people that you can, you know, give for part of the needs of the meetings, but I would contribute too, you know, so that it makes it possible. So I don't come for money, I just come to bless more people. So the motivation came from God and our lives are the you know, only thing we can give forever. Our life and what we do for God. Everything else will go away. How many people we have in the church will go away when we go to heaven? But our heart for God, our life for God is what we can keep forever. So I, I just my motivation is totally all together for God. Whatever God wants me to do, I want to do. I think we'll have one question and then maybe we'll bring it to together. Is it good that you accomplish something the way you pray to do everything? Or is it good that you are not as well, everyone has its unique quality. You can never copy from any person totally. But we can all learn from other people. We can learn, you know, learn how, how to really enjoy God. We can learn that. How to understand how God is wonderful. We can learn that. We can learn how people can be so energetic in the preaching. But it's not just an action. It's not just, you know, pretending to be zealous for Lord. It's, it's all flow from the inside. It, it's okay to learn from people. I learn from people, you know, there are preachers who are very energetic, a lot of action, and I learn from them. And, but I think the most important thing is the heart. And you can learn from the heart. When you see someone have this heart for God, we can learn that too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
I want to know, you said that you teach people to do the work of God or something. And can you speak louder, please? I mean, you said you teach people to do the work of God and to practice and those things. I want to know whether you teach them based on their calling or like you have specifications or you do it general and the person will just pick it on the his or her line. I don't know whether you get what I mean. I, 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 I think I think he already answered that, that question. And maybe an amenity. Um, he already um, yeah, the qualification is just a person has a heart. And, but each person has different callings. But there is something everyone can learn. Everyone can learn to enjoy God. Everyone can learn to share how God has done wonderful things. I think this is what everyone can learn. And everyone can learn to pray for people. Now, not everyone can teach. But to pray for people are simple. And to share what they've experienced is basically simple that everyone can learn. But not everyone can be preachers. Not everyone can be evangelists. But everyone can pray for people.